Along with the pretender to the throne, but a queen who still feels there are more kingdoms to conquer. Today she tests the next generation of women's tennis. Another baseliner who learned from the woman she hopes today to depose as champion. It all started right here in Houston, 20 years ago, when eight of the best in women's tennis signed a co contract guaranteeing them the mighty sum of one dollar. Today, Chris Ebert and 15-year-old Monica Sellis play in the same tournament with one significant change. The prize money today, $250,000. Today, from the Westside Tennis Club in Houston, Texas, it's the final of the Virginia Slims of Houston, featuring the beloved 34-year-old Chris Ebert against the inexperienced but very talented 15-year-old Monica Sellis. Today's telecast is being brought to you by Epilady, the revolutionary way to remove leg hair. For sexy, smooth legs without nicks, cuts, or scrapes, it's Epilady. And by your Toyota dealer. Whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with former Wimbledon champion Virginia Wade. And, Virginia, let's talk first about Monica Sellis. Here's a young lady, never even been in a semifinal, yet a final. And today she has to play Chris Everett. There has to be some butterflies in that young lady's stomach right now. Well, yes, except that I think she's made of the stuff that champions are made of. You know, one gets very hesitant about predicting champions at this young age. But this girl looks as if uh, she's going to go all the way. Uh, she's already grown since last year, and when I last watched her playing, she was hitting the ball so well. Very unorthodox, two hands on both sides, but she hits the ball so early and just thumps it. So I think Chris is going to be a trifle nervous herself. And Chris, of course, right at the top of her game, she has made this tournament her own. She's won it the last three years. She comes off a very fine tournament in Boca Raton where she got to the final before finally losing to Gabriela Sabatini, and she still wants another major. She's still hungry. Well, she has so much pride in her performance, and, you know, she's been such a champion all the way, and... There's no way that she puts in bad performances. She has played Monica before, so she knows what she's up against. I saw Chris uh, in the dressing room before, and she looks as if she was really up for this match. So I expect Chris to, although maybe be a bit nervous at the beginning, to be really at her best today. You've been in this role of playing a young player, an up-and-coming player. Everybody feels, you feel, the audience feels, you and I up here feel, and even Monica Sellis feels that Chris Everett probably should win this match. That's a very tough role. It is, because Monica herself said that it was 95% sure that uh, Chris would win the match. Uh, the, the overriding feeling I have is that it's, uh, she must be filled with happiness that she gets to play Chris while Chris is still at the top of her game. You know, because Chris is the, the difference of the generations. Chris is just leaving, Monica's arriving, and you know, it's really nice to feel that you at least uh, can play them when they're good. Uh, I would say that if Monica won, it would be a huge burden for her to carry around the win so early in such a big tournament. And I don't think there's any question the competitive fire still burns in Chris Everett. As we mentioned, she wants another major. The French is upcoming. This then, just another stepping stone. So it's Chris Everett and Monica Sellis, the final in Houston. We'll be back. You way back at the Westside Tennis Club in Houston, we await the final. Chris Everett and Monica Sellis. Monica Sellis at 15 years old, now plays out of Bradenton, Florida, has been working, of course, with tennis guru Vic Bolateri. Tall task for that young lady today. I think she's been playing so well, though, that uh, she's just going to go for it. As you see, she was born in Novi Sad in Yugoslavia. Uh, has been actually with Bolateri at the academy there for the last couple of years. Her parents live there as well. Her father was a cartoonist in uh, Yugoslavia before he gave that up to uh, come over to the U.S. We're calling her Monica Sellers at the moment because I'm quite sure that uh, when she first arrived on the scene, it's the easiest way of anglicizing the name, but as she gets more and more famous, I imagine we'll go more to the Yugoslavian correct pronunciation, which has got the as the uh, H feel on both S's, so I don't want to even pronounce that yet. I remember, of course, John McEnroe playing his first year at Wimbledon, and they called him McEnroe, <laughs> so they corrected that, and will correct Monica Sellis' name as she goes on, too. Chris Everett, of course, what can be said about her? She's 34 years old. I think the bottom line, though, is that she still is a hungry tennis player, still wants to win. She will serve. Important, I think, for Monica Sellis to get out of the blocks quickly here. Oh, I think she will do that. Football called on the 
very first serve by Chris Everett. Well, Chris must be used to absolutely everything, having played as many matches as that, but I'm sure that is a first. Sells wins the first point like a boxer taking that first punch. And isn't it interesting, right from the very opening, we see Monica, the one who is moving the ball around using every part of that court. And uh, Chris is going to have to somehow stop her making all those angles, or Chris is going to be doing a, a more running than she'd like. Ball was out, but Monica Sells showing a pretty good return of serve there. Being two-handed on both sides, it's a, a problem, I'm sure, to know which side to serve to her. She is left-handed with her service action. That seems to be about equal of both flanks. She sort of lost her footing on that ball. Of course, playing on a hard true court and you can take a little bit of adjustment to the slide of the ball. They had a heavy thunderstorm last night, so it changed probably the texture of the court a little bit. Casillas takes the ball in a rather unusual place, actually. Well, this is why I think she manages to have the limitation of two hands on both sides, because she takes the ball so far in front of her, she never lets it get out wide, and that's uh, where one considers the two-handed to be a limitation. Oh, that's a great shot from Chris. So Chris Everett holds serve in the first game of this match and kind of gives a little bit of a lesson in the sport of tennis to young Monica Sellis. But you're going to see an awful lot of this lady. The French Open. Grand Slam Tennis. Starts May 29th. ESPN. So Chris Everett has held serve to win the first game of this match. This the final, the Virginia Slims of Houston. Incidentally, we mentioned in the opening of this show that Monica Sellis had not gotten so far as a semifinal. She actually has gotten to semifinals. She just has made it through semifinals. from Chris and uh, she got to the semi-final in New Orleans last year but she was not feeling well when she played she had uh, uh, eaten something funny or something like that and so she retired um, you can see <laughs> it's not a lot of matches that she's actually played uh, in actual fact she isn't ranked at this moment she got into this tournament on the merit of being ranked 49 but she since has not played enough tournaments to merit a ranking. Well, the one thing is she's within $8,720,000 in earnings, though, of Virginia, of uh, Chris Everett. Well, you notch up the dollars much faster these days than you did when Chris started. And then uh, she got to the, she beat Garrison, upset Garrison in Washington, and then uh, had to default because she twisted an ankle. Well, 
that's something you just can't do against Chris Evans. Yeah, she did not hit a short ball. So. Sorry, Barry, I was wrong with that. She didn't. She was due to play Garrison and defaulted. She had upset uh, Manuela Maleva, so uh, I, uh, that was the tournament that Garrison did rather well in. No, but I think that point showed that she's prepared to try various things. several with a break off the let court. Chris bearing pace on the ball during that rally too. Yeah, you know, they played just the one time before and that was uh, on hard courts, albeit slow hard courts in Florida last year, just over a year ago. And the score was easy for Chris, but the points were close. She knows that Monica is better this year. Right up the line for a winner. There's a confidence builder. And you can see that Chris was forced to get into the net. Didn't hit a very good shot. The ball bounced altogether too high and uh, produced a, a rather stunning winner, though. You know, I love to watch Chris in a situation like this where she's got absolutely everything to lose and not too much to win here yeah. and uh, just see how she tackles it because in my estimation, Chris, if you set her a problem, she just goes about solving it the right way. Too good. Very good. Not an easy shot to hit. In fact, the shot that Chris Everett has made a career out of. Well, you mentioned a moment ago that these two have seen each other on one other occasion, and Monica Sellis managing only three games, but the score, as you mentioned, a little bit deceiving. She was only 14 then. Unusual for Chris to make the error, maybe a hesitation where to put the ball. Monica grunting with every shot that she hits. I, I sort of have the feeling that she'll grow out of that too, because it's uh, something that's almost discouraged is maybe too strong a word, but uh, it's not really encouraged anymore in the game. Jimmy Connors, of course, has gone a long way with grunting on every shot. So Monica Sellis has held service. Let's take a look at the road to the final here for these two players. Chris Everett beating Gretchen Majors in the round of eight. And then moving on through the quarterfinals. A little bit hard to read that particular thing. She beat uh, Susan Sloan yesterday evening in a very tough opening set. First set went to a tie break. There's that shot we spoke about, but Monica Sellis ran it down. Oh, Chris. Ignored a number of unforced errors early in this match by Chris Everett. Again, the wind factor holding some of the balls and just requiring little time to adjust to that. Chris was. 2-5 down against Susan Sloan before she really asserted really what is her mental superiority. Well, Barry, we were debating the point of whether Salas would come to the net and hit volleys and I think that those are 
Or, or are we talking about a clay court? Let's face it, so nobody's going to really be spending any time up at the net. But that is a shot, which is a really a terrific shot, that swing volley in the middle of the court. And you sort of sneak in and belt the ball, but uh, shoulder high. Ace almost. Yeah, Not quite to go to racket on, but a very good serve. Monica Sellers doing what she can, changing up quite a lot, changing pace on the ball quite a lot. Taking a couple of chances. Once again, Monica Sellers gave Chris Everett the short ball and she didn't put it away the first time, but it's just something you just can't do. It, it also is uh, determined somewhat by the wind because uh, Chris is serving with the wind behind her, coming from her left to, to right, so sort of diagonally behind her. So it is going to be both an advantage if you can get it right. So Chris Everett has held for two games to one but we're still on serve this is the virginia slims final in houston and we'll be back you know i'm served chris forever two games to one monica sellis to serve weather conditions here in houston 78 degrees is the temperature but the wind even though it's out of the northwest they say five to ten it is gusting and that has caused some problems in earlier matches today Sorry, I'm surprised that Chris doesn't uh, step in and take that loop ball on the rise because if she lets it climb up, she's going to have to go back too far. And she really doesn't want to get herself too far behind that baseline. Somewhat cooler day than yesterday. They played in extreme heat, 87 degrees, sweltering hot yesterday. Chris said, by far the hottest day of the tournament. Just a uh, it's interesting to watch uh, the difference in these players' footwork. Chris always having been one of the cleanest movers of the feet in the game. She almost walks into a shot rather than running or jumping like, say, a Steffi Graf does. And uh, Monica slides into it. She uses the clay well. I think for all the years, because of the way Chris plays because of the way she appears to play. She hasn't been given credit for being a good athlete, and she really is a good athlete. Wonderful anticipation. Maybe if you uh, set a gun going, she wouldn't win all the sprints, but terrific anticipation. And to add to that, Chris Everett has the best killer instinct I think I've ever seen, not only in the sport of tennis, but in any sport for that matter. You were talking about the footwork of Chris Everett along the baseline. Just very economical footwork. She actually slid a little bit that time, but just super. Point being with what we mentioned about killer instinct in Chris Everett. She's the type of person who, if she starts to get you, starts to find what your weakness might be, the match is over. She takes no prisoners. Oh, you're absolutely right. She will just pin you in your weakest corner. And, uh, you know, we're going back a, a, a long time with that uh, expertise of hers. From the very moment she started, when she was just a little bit older than this opponent here today, she was always so precise. 
accurate, determined. It's very hard if you consider her career to pinpoint when she was actually at her very best. Could, could have been any number of years. Just for a moment to oh. put it into perspective, fine return to serve for a winner by Monica Sellis. Nice little comeback after the service break by Chris Everett. Just but to see how early she hits this ball. Just no chance for Chris. She had hardly recovered from her service action when that ball went whistling by her. To put it into perspective, as we mentioned a moment ago, when Chris Everett was getting to the semifinals of the French and U.S. Opens in that Cinderella year of hers when she was 19 years old, Monica Sellis was just born. Another winner for 15-year-old Monica Sellis. And now we'll see if we can pick it up in a slightly slower motion. It's a slightly strange uh, backswing on the shot, but such an effective early ball. Again, the shortfall, and Monica Sellis has a little talk with herself. That was a big point for Monica, as is this next one. 15.30. When people hit the ball as early as this, you just have to make sure that you are prepared in time. It's really a matter more of timing than of uh, the effectiveness of the shot. You just have to adjust your own timing to suit theirs. did that in that point she hit the ball without too much back swing the one-handed backhand there and Chris cleverly goes behind her always a good play against a fast young player and it's failed both times. Monica did uh, really well actually to hit such a good shot of that because it's, a, it's quite awkward to actually run forward so fast and get both hands around, have enough time to, to make the shot. So, chance for Monica to break back. Well, I love it. Monica stood way in there, all the way over in the alley, practically. Chris had to serve a big second serve down the tee, and she did just that. the advantage and back in control of this service game. Chris Everett is an open book. Just watching the expression on her face will tell you almost everything you need to know about the match. If you're a longtime Chris watcher, and I've been watching her play for, feels like, about 80 years. I know, if you really watch her, she always was supposed to be the ice maiden, but you could certainly tell. Can well, opponents tell too? Could you play when you're on the other side? Double fault. Oh, well, she was uh, <laughs> nearly always winning, so you <laughs> didn't have a chance to indulge yourself in studying her face. But you could tell if she was worried. See, that time Monica did exactly the same, and she caused double fault from Chris. There's a left call. Oh, 
just thought. Uh, Monica Sell is finding herself in no person's land, if you will. <laughs> How am I doing? <laughs> Whatever you like, Barry. I'd call it no man's land. <laughs> So Chris Everett struggles a little bit, but does manage to hold serve. She still has a break in hand. Four games to one. Chris Everett leads. First set of the final here in Houston. We'll be back. This is the final of the Virginia Slims of Houston, 20 years after. One of those times, of course, that you look at the score, you say four games to one. Well, this one's over. In fact, it's just a service break. Good play. When you watch Monica hitting these shots at both sides, it is awfully hard to tell whether she is left-handed or right-handed, isn't it? I mean, you're sort of almost surprised when she hits a serve with her left hand. Good return from Chris. Monica was almost undecided there, thought perhaps that ball was going out, it was right on the line. You know, Barry, it seems to me that Chris is very comfortable out here as you see how smoothly and easily she's hitting the ball. And I think that the real reason is that Monica hits it so hard and Chris has always lapped up the pace. I think where she gets into problems with the baseline is when they really hit the sort of slow, sluggish ball, take the pace off it, and she has to generate all the pace. So Monica's really playing right into Chris's hand. In, in a way, although you can absolutely see why Monica's just been thrashing a lot of the other players because they don't have a, a chance to play the ball. Something you will not see very much. Well, I'm sure Monica was happy to see an error there because uh, she got herself down at this stage. She would have a long fight back, and you can see the wind just making that ball drop a little bit more than Chris had anticipated, and so the ball is there. Yep. It's a big service game for Monica Sellers. Hugely important. She's uh, had a very good tournament here. She beat uh, another good youngster, Kerry Cunningham, but absolutely wiped her off the court yesterday. Only lost one game. But they've had uh, some uh, good players in here. Oh. Zena Garrison was the number two seed and lost to Andrea Temesvari. Making a tennis comeback. Yeah, a young player, but making, having been out of the game for a few years with injuries. Andrea is now married and uh, returning. Always so tough on clay courts in particular. And once ranked number seven in the world, so an excellent player. Mm -hmm. And so 
Priscilla set to beat her. One close set. not pleased with herself. We mentioned she's an open book. That's a look that says, I'm not too happy with that. And uh, the player that uh, Sellers had most trouble with was uh, Amy Frazier. She took three sets to, to beat her, and that is another of the promising young American players. Uh, there certainly are a lot more young players who are just on the horizon. to see the next great British player. Oh, I don't know. It might be any length of time from there. But, uh, you know, there's also a tournament running this week in Barcelona and Spain, and they have uh, Arancha Sanchez, who's such so terrific. She's in the final against Helen Pilesi. And one of the semifinalists was a young Czech player who I had never heard of. So if she's getting to the semifinals of tournaments, so you know that she must be good. Yeah, there is a definite changing of the guard in women's tennis. Well, there's also an interna uh, internationalization, and um, consequently, there probably are going to be more tournaments in Europe over the next few years. They prepare to put up any amount of money. You know, women's tennis is very strong now with the new contract with General Foods. Virginia Slims remains in their Cafe Hague in Europe. And uh, I think uh, it's going to all work out very well. Very stable, the game. Yeah, that backhand is just floating with the wind. And Barry, think of another Spanish player who really came to into the limelight just a couple of weeks ago, and that was uh, uh, Conchita Martinez, who beat uh, none other than Gabriela Sabatini in the final of Tampa. Very healthy. It's a good thing, the sport. I'm not talking about a couple of weeks ago. That was only a week, week ago. ago. Yes. Floated again on Chris Everett. So, Chris Everett very uncharacteristically now with a service break against her off a couple of unforced errors. We're back on serve. We'll be back more than just in this match. She's on serve, serving to square the match at four. been a very big weapon for her. And that uh, shows us that she's an intelligent player because uh, she saw that she had Chris in trouble, uh, sort of uh, snuck into the net and had to hit her. Uh, it, it wasn't a volley. It could have been if uh, Chris had looped the ball, but she made up with that magnificent touch shot. She's thinking all the time on the court. Well, Couldn't get away with that one. <laughs> Did not work. A sitter. Here's a look at the first serve comparisons. As you can see, Monica Sellis getting 86% of her first serves in. I don't think really 
least my impression is with these two that a first serve percentage is really too much of a factor. She missed it. Well, in actual fact, though, it's not so much that uh, it's going to get them any freebie points getting first serves in, but if, if they force to serve second serves to players who return serves so well, then that is, a, that is a minus. But actually, you look at this girl and you say that she is a baseliner, but she has a good service action. We've talked about the change in the game, especially today, having watched some of the seniors play, which we'll mention again. That almost drove Chris Everett into the seats and she hit it out. The game has uh, so much become a baseline game, and it uh, worries me somewhat that uh, the service technique hasn't developed to the same extent that the ground strokes, as you can see, Chris knew that she was in the net, threw up that deep lob, but missed it. Um, and yet this girl has actually got a better service action than a lot of players, uh, a lot of the women on the tour. Is that going to change now with, with the success that Steffi Graf has had? I, I think so. I think that people will... Uh, turn around and remember that the serve can be such a huge weapon. Right on the line. Good. Well, we were saying that she was hitting hard balls which played into Chris's hands, and she has changed that, but she still has the ability to absolutely launch herself at the ball and Chris having a long, hard look at that, it just skimmed the outside of the line. And a lot of balls up the middle of the court. Also, an intelligent play against Chris. Take away her angle. A replay of Monica Sellis' shot at the other side, right on the line, close call. And uh, very important, really, for Chris to take the initiative in that rally, clean the line, because otherwise she was beginning to get a little negative. And, uh, you know, it's a shame to waste a 4 1 lead and let it go to 4 all. That was out. This is, of course, a very big point for both players, particularly for Chris Everett. Of course, she gets a service break here. She can serve the first set. And just when it appeared her game was getting a little bit ragged. And there it is. So the break and an opportunity to serve for the set now for Chris Everett. 
sellout crowd here at Houston. In fact, they've had good crowds the last two days. 5,600 people yesterday, 5,300 on Friday. And I'm sure Chris uh, a little grateful to Monica for those uh, two wild shots because she had been sort of handcuffing Chris for a while there. And you could almost sense for a moment Monica Sellis early in that last game, especially start to think, I'm not only glad to be here, I think I might be able to win this. And then she had those two Aaron shots. Now she's going to have to gather herself up again. But it's obvious to me that uh, she prefers to really thump the ball, and uh, yet she had worked out that hitting all that pace wasn't really getting her as far as hitting the slower ball. But she, you know, takes a lot of discipline to keep hitting that slow ball. Anticipation by Chris Evans. She really got away with quite a lot there, Chris, because that was not a good shot that she hit. And I love it. She just stands there so calmly as if that was planned all the way. Exactly the way I played it. Well done. So two points from the first set is Chris Everett. by Chris Everett. Interesting to note, you were talking earlier about Monica Sellis grunting on every shot. She actually grunts before she hits the ball. Yeah, uh, exhales as she's hitting it, and Chris able there to nail that backhand of hers. Always her strongest side, really. Though it's a, uh, you couldn't call either of the sides of Chris weak. I think when she was younger, the backhand was just the, was so much, that two-handed backhand was so much her strength. And then she had to get the forehand up to the same level. Also, people have told me, and of course you've been on the other side of the net from her, that she's a very good volleyer. Oh yes, she's a superb volleyer. She's a very good volleyer, but I, it, she's not what I would call natural in her anticipation at the net. She, if she sets herself up and gets one volley, she'll hit it absolutely perfectly. And likewise in doubles, where she knows what her, her range is. But when she's there in singles, she doesn't really want to have to hit a series of volleys. Disguise that shot beautifully. So the first set goes to Chris Everett. She does it in rather spectacular fashion with a perfect drop shot. Held the ball in a racket just long enough. Six games to three, the first set to Chris Everett. Do numbers tell the story? Uh, not often, but uh, the, where we'll find is that the errors, well, they're about equal. But what I would like to determine is uh, which side uh, Sellers is stronger on, and I, I believe that she's stronger on what we would call her backhand side, which is when she's uh, hitting the two-handed side uh, as it would be a right-handed uh, forehand. So I think she's making more errors off the, her forehand, the left-handed side. Explains it. 
or we might be able to break them down into the errors of both sides. So we have the benefit of computer tennis right here next to us. I'm sure we can work that out. First game of the second set, Chris Everett having won the first six games to three, and she had a struggle. Chris seeming to make more errors from the side with the wind, and that's the ball not coming through to her. With the wind behind you, you've just got to take that one step closer to the ball and also possibly put a little bit more topspin on. Yeah, I'm, we're making it sound as if it is very windy down there. It's not very windy, but it is definitely there. And it's not constant. There, It's gusting kinds of wind. Well, that's only the first double fault that Monica served. You know, when we were up high in the booth, we also feel the wind, obviously, much more. Yeah, and that, that had to be uh, the wind stopping that ball. It's hard to tell, really, where the wind is coming from on the playing surface itself. Any ball hit in the air it will go from our left to our right, or left to right across your screen, as you see it right now. But the way this court is built, I would think there could be some unusual gusts. Ball is out, so Monica Sellis has held to start the second set. Chris Everett has won the first set. One set to love, she leads. First game of the second set is over. Monica Sellis has held. story Chris Everett having won the first set serving now to square the second set we were talking earlier about Monica Sellis's errors and forehand or backhand we have those numbers yeah they're actually just about equal that's a good shot from Chris they are they're virtually exactly equal but she has hit more winners off the backhand side I even noticed that in the warm-up, Chris was hitting many more balls to her forehand, so probably trying to exploit it a little bit. One of the best overheads Chris hit off the ground there. The wind we were talking of a moment ago, too, appears to have gotten a little bit stronger in the last, I'd say, five to ten minutes. Just uh, skid off the service line, that ball. Double fault by Chris Everett. So every time it looks like Chris is getting complete hold of this match, she will either make a couple of errors, or in this case a double fault, and look human again. But she, and she looks to me as if she feels pretty much in control. You know, she and remembers that uh, last year she beat Martina handily here, 6-love, six 6-4, six and the year before, but she made, beat Martina, but it was the 7-6 and the 3rd. And that's where I think that Monica's backhand is uh, so effective. She doesn't take uh, quite such a big swing on the backhand side, hits it maybe a fraction earlier, and then can rip it cross-court, get that extreme angle. But still 40-34, Chris. Chris tried to go up the tee, just missed with that serve. Wasn't very pleased with that call, although it did look a little bit wide.
and definitely choosing to return with the backhand side if possible, leaving a lot of space on that side, forcing Chris to hit to it, although she has to run around this one, but talk about getting the body into that shot. It's really seemed to freeze Chris on the baseline, too. And now a break point for Monica Sella. So she has come back from love 40 down in this set in this game, I should say, to now have the opportunity of a break point. Definitely a few lapses in Chris's concentration. <laughs> yeah. Well. like this just when it looked like Chris Everett was going to be in complete charge of this having won the first set and on her way to a very easy service game here up jumped the devil in the person of Monica Seltz that backhand is vicious isn't it really like the way she plays she plays very poised doesn't play like a 15 year old kid well and she moves very well you know there's a story that Bolatieri goes around the world periodically looking for talent and he saw her when she was literally 10 years old and uh, she did, she wanted to give up the game she'd only been playing for a couple of years she was already burnt out at 10. <laughs> he went back when she was 12 and said you know this girl's too good she's too talented you've got to uh, get her to concentrate a little bit more and then she that's about when she started her career and went off to Bolatieri's Academy in Bradenton, Florida en famille there's a frightening thought burnt out at 10 but I, you know I think that this girl uh, is very unusual she is not a clone of a lot of the players I think she thinks for herself and I think therefore she can make decisions for herself and uh, hopefully she'll be able to gauge and hopefully that will serve her well the, the fact of the matter is Vic Boletari a number of his disciples have suffered from burnout beforehand you know there is some controversy about the rule that the WITA has uh, which uh, allows them only to play a limited schedule at uh, the age of 14 and not actually allow them to play on the big tour until they're 14. Oh, good well, shot. Winner. Excellent shot. And Jennifer Capriati, who's one of the most uh, talented uh, young American players, is 13, is wanting to play on the tour and is frustrated because they won't uh, allow her that. Now, one doesn't know what correct. Maybe one shouldn't make rules. No, they just missed the surf. Just uh, wanted to check. She obviously thought it was good. Uh, but th this young girl, Monica, actually feels that it helped her n not being allowed to play until she was 14. Excellent get by Jennifer, or rather Monica Sellis, to stay in that point. So an excellent service game after all is said and done because it is difficult coming off a break to get it back up to serve. Sellis did just that. Conference with Virginia Wade. These are the finals of the Virginia Slims of Houston. Chris Everett won the first set six games to three. Seemed to be able to go handily from there. But in the second game, after Chris Everett had a 40-love lead, Monica Sellis came back, had a service break, held serve on her own, and now leads it three games to love. Everett serving a breakdown. And uh, Chris must be a little worried because this is a side that she has uh, made many more errors from, and she must be really disappointed in herself for allowing that second game to get away from her. It's 
good shot. So Chris Herbert getting back on track. I have to think, though, Virginia, that Monica Sellis has to feel, I can win this match. Well, I'm sure that when she went on the court, she knew that she could and she had a chance of winning. I'm sure whenever she goes on the court, she feels that way, but I wouldn't think she's thinking of that right now. It's, uh, you know, it's early days here. And as Chris so aptly said, when she struggled 2-5 uh, down against Susan Sloan, she said afterwards, she said, not only do these young players have to beat me, but I have to lose. And uh, mentally, I don't think one's going to see that. That was out. It almost seems like Chris has to get a wake-up call. And maybe that was the wake-up call, that service break in the second game. I don't know whether I agree with you on that, because I just think that uh, one of the things that Chris finds that happens to her now is that she does have a few lapses, because she isn't, I suppose, absolutely as dedicated morning, noon, and night to, to the game, and uh, consequently her mind does go through it once in a small while. Game over. So Chris Everett this time with a very easy service game and she seems to have kicked it up a gear but still a breakdown. Dallas Lee 3-1. Determined look on the face of Chris Everett. This also says that she really prefers to play some aggressive players, some front court players, so volley players, which of course you're not really going to see on clay doing that well anyway, and which isn't any secret because she's always been brilliant at passing them. Oh, that's too good. Andy Mill, who married to Chris Everett now, of course, has urged Chris to stop and smell the flowers, and hence that would help her tennis game, and he and Chris both feel that that really has. She's taken some time for herself, and her tennis game with it has not dropped off at all. Well, when you talk about Chris, are you sure not talking about anybody who has to prove himself anymore? One of the absolute greatest. Chris gives a little shrug. Monica Sellis right now, at least in this set, just has to worry about Monica Sellis, not about Chris Everett. Good shot. Much better to take that ball in the air than to let it bounce and bound up high. Forced error by Chris Everett. Crowd warming to Monica Sellis a little bit here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ball was called good, and I don't think Monica Sellis it was, agrees with that. It definitely hit the line. You have the ball? Now, whether or not it hit the line in the right place is another matter. Uh, Chris going up to the net because she thinks she might have missed it. And now the same call is corrected. It's Monica Sellis has held serve for four games to one. Here's another look at it. Well, it looks, uh, it, it did seem to clean the line, but it was uh, just to the side of the alley. So Monica Sellis still a break at hand. Four games. Barry Tommy is with Virginia please. Wade. We are back in Houston. These are the finals of the Virginia Slims tournament. Chris Everett won the first set 6-3, but Monica Sellis with a second game service break. Thank you. 4-1 up. Chris Everett to serve. Sixth game, second set. through my mind that Chris might uh, let the second set go. Not that it's uh, anything that I've ever seen Chris do, but just to re-establish herself. Uh, you just see that Monica's hitting a few more winners than Chris at the moment, and that's really making the difference. But, but she has to work so hard for every point, uh, and sometimes you just have to calm yourself down and then uh, re-establish what it is you're trying to do out there. So set up by that good serve. 15-0. And I do hasten to to say again that I've never seen Chris ever do no, that. No, no, very out of character if she does. And it isn't that it's that stifling hot here. Not a good shot, 15, that one. 30. Chris uh, sort of really planning out her play court schedule this year. She will go to uh, Rome, I believe, and then she will come back for a week, practice in Florida, go to Paris, and come back before going to the grass. saw and those unforced errors, not to interrupt. Seven unforced errors to four from Monica Sellis. Off the racket of Chris Everett. 15, and that's her third double fault. So, a slightly listless Chris just at this moment. Ball was out. 30, 40. Good serve again, set it up. Still a break point for Monica Sellis on the serve for Chris Everett, and of course, that would allow Monica Sellis the opportunity to serve for the set. Ooh, that was just wide. So Not by much. close. Hit the line. Just wide of the tape, the center tape. So the service break for Monica Sellis. Two breaks up, five games to one in the second set. Everett leads the match, one set to love. But Sellis now with a chance to even the match on her serve. Fifteen love. Monica Sellis having it all her own way, and she also has gotten the crowd a little bit on her side, too. She's a very bipartisan crowd now. Very interesting meeting of the generations, isn't it? And it truly has been a day for uh, all the generations in the game. They had uh, started off with the doubles with Billie Jean and Rosie Cassell, Judy Dalton and Francoise Dewar's uh, uh, anniversary, really, a reunion of 20 years of Virginia Slims in the game, t professional tennis, women's tennis. Started right here in Houston. The lady who started it, Gladys Hellman, is in the crowd. And again, very uncharacteristic. 40 love. 
And so it looks as if Chris did decide to let the set go, but she, I'm sure, will take a long, hard think at this next changeover. Three set points for this young lady. But, uh, little irritation from Chris, and that that is a sign that she's going to get her teeth into it. play that point like she was giving the set up. 40, 50. Now, even if you're trying to mentally get yourself ready for the next set, you also really want to make sure your strokes are alongside your, your mental attitude. So she doesn't want to give away too many more bad points. <laughs> you, you know, it is, it's so important to make sure that you remain confident of your own game if you're letting it slide and just about getting ready to think about a, another set if you start losing your coordination or losing your your shot making you start off at the beginning of the set really rather insecure third set point and that's it game and second set so this match is dead even as Monica Sellis holds serve to win the second set and win it handily, six calls us to move ahead now. After the first game of the third set, in which Chris Upton held serve, to pick up the action now. Second game, third and final set, Sellis serving. So that's the way it stands. Bottom line of it all, set a piece, on serve, third and final set, Monica Sellis to serve. Oh, that's such a good shot. To be able to suddenly change the ball and roll it at such a shallow angle. Just very good stuff. And uh, that was the one that went deeper. Let's see if we can see what she does with her hands. Yeah, just rolls those hands over to get that acute angle. Not a fluke either. She's made that shot two or three times in this match. Yes. Well disguised. And at one stage you said that Clyde was getting behind Sellers. See, that, that's probably the story of that second set giving you those extra errors that made it so easy in the end, score-wise anyway, 6-1. But I was saying that the crowd certainly comes out and starts getting behind Chris. They love Chris. And you're right, they do love Chris Everett here. And, and well, the feeling I get from this crowd is they want Chris Everett to win the match, but they want Monica Sellis to make it close. That, I'm sure that's absolutely right, and that drop shot just wasn't good enough. So we saw Monica in a volleying position. Chance to hold it love for Monica Sellis. Played a good game here. Excellent game. Service Thanks. winner to close out a love game. And it's one all, third and deciding set. Win or lose, you have to give a lot of credit to Monica Sellis here. Well, as we said before, it is so difficult these days to predict how far these young players are going to go because there's so many more aspects of the game other than just the talent that they have. And most of that is the ability to cope with the pressure. But I do think that we have somebody here who's going to go all the way. Just got... 15 She's only 15 years old. 
and she does have what looks to be, and we mentioned this earlier, but a very adaptable type of game. She doesn't look like she necessarily has to be only a baseline player. I would actually like to see, you know, a little bit more adventure to other shots than just baseline, but I think that uh, you, she does it so well that uh, she'll, she's got a very adequate game, more than that. Look at that. That's just a terrific shot. And she's made it off both sides now. 30, 15. If you can hit the ball as well as this, this will go exactly over to a fast court, so that makes her an aggressive player on fast as well as slow courts. And you know about fast courts. Your little club over in England is... Uh... Well, they, they play quite fast, the grass courts. <laughs> Fun slow. Talking, of course, about the All England Tennis and Croquet Club. I remember asking Arthur Ashe how you get into that club, and he said, well, the easiest way is to win the tournament. got fooled by that. I think she thought that Monica's ball was going out. 30 all. Have to work so hard for every single point here. So now a break point for Monica Sellis. This is the, possibly the biggest point of this young lady's career. I don't know if that's overstating it. She hasn't played or won a match like this before. She hasn't been in a final before, so you might have to say maybe it is. Well, you also have to take into consideration who's on the other side of the net. That's true. like that. No problem. Monica Sellers with a service break. She'll be serving Everett, please, a break in up. hand. One set of this one. Everett wins the first set and after that Monica Sellers comes back to take the second. Six games to one. She now has a service break in the third and deciding set serving to Chris Everett. That has been the area that she's been missing today. 
just never seems to have quite controlled that cross-court wind. They just float out on her. But Chris must really be still thinking of that second game of the second set when she was 40 love up on her serve and that it just let up. So important then. There it is again. Different kind of shot, but out by probably two feet. And if you just look back th uh, throughout the last two sets, the whole match, I've had a lot of errors and a better score altogether for Monica. More winners and less errors. Which all adds up to a win. The thing that is interesting to me is right now Monica, Monica Sellis is the player who's the aggressive player and Chris Everett is taking much more of a defensive posture than even Chris Everett normally would take. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I just think that, uh, as I said, that second game was just so, so costly because it set the whole thing in a downhill slide for her. And now she's actually seems to me as if she's lost a little bit of her coordination of the timing, the rhythm, and that can happen. Good shot. And we'll see what that shot does for Chris Everett. 40, now, every time Monica sell us, let's take another look at that. She, she just decided to go for it, didn't she? And she hit it perfectly. Every time Monica Sellis has found herself in that situation where she's lost on an emotional point, if you will, she's just bounced right back. Still has two game points here. Game Sellis. So Sellis holds for 3 1. And uh, Monica definitely isn't doing anything outrageous to be in a winning position. She is just hitting the ball very consistently with plenty of margin of error. It's not as if it's something that could totally fall apart if she suddenly realizes what the status of this match is. And so uh, looking at her face, it looks a little bit more worried than it did before. I mean, imagine how you must feel. Maybe. Maybe she, maybe she'll handle it. She's not shown at all the fact that she might wilt. She has actually been the more aggressive of the two players, with the possible exception of the last two or three points. Great shot. I mean, Chris is. I think Chris has got to fifteen love. Go for a few shots and find the court like that. Not give her a chance to dominate her. Chris shouldn't have to work this hard in a match against somebody of this who's hitting the ball as well. Ace, or not an ace, it's a uh, winning serve. 30 love. What a good serve. Chris Everett, two service winners in a row for Chris Everett. Who it seems has almost said it's time to get serious here. The crowd suddenly explodes behind her. That could help. Forty fifty. Well, every time it looks like she's really starting to get on track and get things in gear, she'll hit a shot like that. She has a nice rhythm when she moves on the baseline because she's way out of position over there, really moves over, gets back in position and reads that ball well. Go back to something that you said earlier, quoting Chris Everett. She said, my opponent not only has to win, I have to lose. And to be very honest, right now, both are happening. 
another 40 love game that she's let go to use. Is the Obama error off the it. backhand it's this, in this particular end of the court, which has plagued Chris Everett for the entire match? <laughs> and Chris Everett just flat looks disgusted. She gets so aggravated with herself if she makes this many errors. Uh oh. A double fault giving the second service break of this third and final set to Monica Salas, who now has the match in her own hand. She can win it, and it doesn't matter if Chris Everett loses it. We'll be back. Virginia Wade, we are in Houston. Yes, that is the right score. Everett wins the first set, 6-3. Salas comes back to take the second six games to one, and yes, it is Monica Salas, 15 years old, serving to Chris Everett two breaks in hand in the third and deciding set. She is simply taking the match to Chris. Love 15. Well, it was that a little sign of nerves. She has had a very high percentage of first serves in and only one double fault so far in the match. Oh, Ooh, there's another it. error. Here's Love some 30. startling numbers though, Virginia. Just in the last uh, set, in the same set, Chris has had 13 unforced errors against Monica's two. And there have been a lot of winners in there for the youngster. Well, a few errors, but Christmas. We, I think we must consider that this match has uh, been really lost, or uh, I mean, yet, may yet turn around. But those two games that Chris led 40 11 and let yeah. slide away, one at the beginning of the second set and one the last game. Well, we but mentioned that it was Monica Salas's match to win. It's also probably fair to say it's her match to lose. Well, yes, uh, and uh, but you just that think that if Chris had won that last game, it would now be three all. Anyway, so Chris gets one break back. But Monica Sellis, for her part, will have to just settle down. Right. She can win it on her own serve, and her serve has been very effective. You said at the beginning of the set it was a one-set match. It still is. Interesting call. Crowd doesn't like it. I remember Chris in the final of the Italian Championships one year playing, I think it was the final, playing against Kathleen Horvath, when Horvath, uh, also coming from the Volatieri school, played so well against her, I think had a couple of match points and couldn't win the match. Who's out? 15-0. And again, every time it looks like Chris has just kind of let another notch out and gotten her game back on track, she'll get a ball like that one. That wasn't a, wasn't a terrible shot, but it was probably a good six inches out. Oh. 
Ball called out. That was a close call. Chris just uh, rather tight on her stroke production now, and that's uh, obviously because of the tension. You start to get physically tense, and then you just don't get quite the power on the ball. gutsy shot that Chris Everett made. Well, I think she's got to produce uh, uh, good shots, aggressive shots, winning shots, because uh, if she plays the rally just baseline to baseline, she's doing an awful lot of hard work and not really getting anywhere. Big point to take it back to 30 all. mentioned earlier, Chris had to come back from 2-5 down against Susan Sloan just to get this far. That was not in the deciding set. Familiar situation for Chris Everett, a break point against her for the 15-year-old. So much hard work in that point, and then what looked like just a relatively ordinary point, she hit into the shot, she hit into the net. And I would have said that she was pretty much in control of those shots during that point. Yes, in fact, Monica seemed to hit a couple of very defensive shots, almost tentative shots. Got to it again, went for the winner and almost got it. There it is. Jane said it. Let's take another look at that last effort by Monica Sellis. Chris Everett went for that drop shot again. Did she go to the well one time too many? Perhaps it's Sellis to serve for the match. It is not Wimbledon, it is not the U.S. Open, nor the Australian, but are we seeing the changing of the guard in women's tennis? Monica Sellis now serving for the match. This is her first final, and here she is, 5-2 up, a chance to beat Chris Everett. Makes you nervous on her behalf, just Love thinking of that situation. You can just see her body suddenly perhaps turning into jelly. I mean, it's a fairly alarming thought. More scary to be 5 2 up in the third than 5 2 down, really. Yeah, nothing to lose at 5 2 down. Now, that seemed to me, that first shot by Chris Sermon actually seemed like a tentative shot. It also seems to me as if we saw a, a little less fluidity in Celis's movement there. So I'm sure there's something that's working to make her nervous as well. End of a match is always the hardest. And then Chris gives her a little hand. 15, 30. Well, again, to go back to what Chris Everett said, they not only have to beat me, I have to lose. Well, today Monica Celis is beating her, and right now Chris Everett is losing. And I mean that more than just literally. She is handing the match 
to Monica Sellis on some, on some occasions. Two break points now for Chris Everett. She broke Monica Sellis, remember, in her last service game. And then got broken herself. It's incredible to have an opportunity like this to watch, to see the, the past master Chris is holding her own on a clay court and in as deep water as she is. But it is a case of taketh and giveth. Mm -hmm. good backhand shots that one that went all the way out and now she gently goes just as effectively down the line I missed uh, that one that's the one that goes down the line I tell you watch Monica Sellis and you almost get an image of Chris Everett what a time to have to change your racket get an image of Chris Everett 15 years ago well, she is a, a little more action and activity than Chris. Chris was always very, very calm out there. This girl puts uh, more effort into her shots, but she actually generates more pace, so it pays off. That's a good shot, Chris. Does having to change rackets, as Monica Sauls did, does that affect anything at this juncture? Well, uh, Barry, it shouldn't because all her rackets should be identical, but, but by the time she's played with one racket for two hours, I'm sure the tension has dropped somewhat on the strings. Another break point for Chris Everett. Well, she's got one back. Three service breaks in a row. Two by Chris Everett, one against Chris Everett. So Monica Sellis had an opportunity and let it slip away. That is the 5 3. And she switched rackets uh, again. Maybe there's a string that hasn't quite broken on that one. I, I have no idea which one she picked up. But her body didn't move quite so well to that last ball, did it? Quietly. What a difficult thing trying to unseat the champion's champion, and she has gone back to her original racket, we are told. There was a problem with the racket that she had picked up to replace this racket in the first place. It was in the grip. So often I feel for Chris, it's harder for her when it comes down to the Not crunch the to hold her own serve than it is to win the opponent's serve. And, uh, Although we say that first serves don't make such a difference, if she misses her first serve, she is looking at a very fearsome return from Monica. And Monica is playing better in Chris's service games also over the last few. That'll be an edgy second surface. Good serve. Boy, right into a gust of wind, too. You might have heard it come up right as Chris hit her serve. And again, the body didn't move quite so easily to that shot. You see, at this stage, Chris, I don't think, will make any more mistakes. And here you see that she just uh, really needed two more steps to get over there. She was wrong footed, but she's been so fast all the time. Chris having a lot of trouble with the first serve. Ah! 
That's a wonderful shot from Chris. And Chris Everett digging down and finding something. 30 15. Here's another one of those big points for both players. 30 15. 3 5. Third set. So two points to hold serve now for Chris Everett. 40 15. And then there will be even more pressure on Monica Sellis than there has been her last two service games. Because now Chris Everett will be right there. So Everett holds. Chris Everett has found something, that something that makes champions. 4-5, Everett is down in the third set. Sellis to serve. With Virginia Wade, this is the final of the Virginia Slims of Houston. Crowd applauding both players and well they should. Chris Everett has found something, something inside of her to come back and make a match out of this. Monica Sellis now, after being two breaks up in the third set, will serve again for the match. Her third chance to do that. It is incredible, isn't it, Barry? A match is never over until it's over, but it's also incredible that these two players are now hitting the ball a little differently from a couple of games ago. Both are so tight. It was out. Ever didn't really agree with that, although when she walked over and took a look, it did appear, and it appeared from up here, and we're sitting almost right on that line that it was out. Two points from the match. This lady, Monica Sellis. Out again. Three match points from Monica Sellis. We said this lady. I think I'm stretching a point. This, folks, is a girl. Yeah, she is certainly 15, only 15 in December. And what a history-making match this is here. Absolutely. She may never play Chris Everett again, because if Chris does possibly retire at the end of this year, she'll be out. And if she wins this game, she'll be able to say that she beat Chris while she was still at her very best. What a shot! That is absolutely brilliant under those circumstances. Oh, some weird things happen on match point. 15. How do you like that? But still. Chris has still got to produce a little more magic. I mean, that's a shot you can't hit.
deciding set to win the championship at Houston. Here's another look at match point. 15-year-old Monica Sellett comes up with a three-set victory to win the championships here at Houston. She wins at 3-6, 6-1, and 6-4. And Virginia, I think it's fair to say that, yes, she took what Chris Everett gave her, but she also made her own breaks today. Well, you know, she's such a good player that it was on the cards that she could beat Chris, but little did I think she'd beat her in her final, her first final. But yet, you know, Barry, I don't think this will be the last final we'll see her winning. It's premature, of course, to say out with the old, but is it premature to say in with the new? Uh, it's, it is hard to say that. I think she's 15, but I think it is possible that she might go straight to the top, uh, a la Steffi Graf, a la Chris Everett uh, did in the early days. We literally have seen three generations of tennis today. Remember, it all started here, the Virginia Slims Tour in Houston 20 years ago when eight players signed a contract guaranteeing them all of one dollar. Then there was the Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova era. Well, today, Chris Everett lost. Now there's the Steffi Graf, Gabriela Sabatini era. And you might want to add one more name to that. The name of a 15-year-old Yugoslav, Monica Sellis. The Virginia Slims of Houston has been brought to you by Epilady, the revolutionary way to remove leg hair. For sexy, smooth legs without nicks, cuts, or scrapes, it's Epilady. And by your Toyota dealer. Whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? So, for Virginia Wade, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long for the Westside Tennis Club in Houston, Texas.